Hey guys, and welcome back to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble, and this video is about OpenGL in KiCad, and what is it, and why do you want to use it, and what's going on here? So I actually had mentioned this on the Amp Hour, which is a podcast that I record uh, on a weekly basis, and I had mentioned OpenGL, and I kind of was looking around for links for it, and I saw there, I mean, there's, there's some stuff around it, but a lot of it's like, oh, OpenGL is terrible. Anyways, it has gotten so much better. We are now currently on 4.0.7, the release of KiCad. It's now October of 2017. This is basically a tool or a section of the tool or a subset of the tool that has been in development for a while now. And I really think it's getting to the point where it's, uh, you know, getting more more mature and really, really useful. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been using it for a long time, either through the nightly builds on KiCad or they've, you know, they're, they're the developers or whatever. Uh, I have personally avoided it just because it's one of those things where I, I didn't, I didn't take the time to learn it yet. I knew there were some useful things in there, but until I had needed a, until I had a kind of a, a more intense design, I didn't know what I would use it for and why I needed it. So um, the difference in general is it's a graphics engine, right? OpenGL is a graphics engine. Uh, the developers switched to using that for future development, I think because the former stuff, it would just be harder to take it forward and develop. It's all, you know, as you may or may not know, KiCad is cross-platform, so it needs to compile across, you know, Windows, Mac, Linux, everything like that. And OpenGL does, and so does the Legacy Canvas. So I'll refer to Legacy Canvas and OpenGL. Like I said, I've been avoiding it, but all of the best new toys in KiCad, <laughs> toys, uh, all of the best new toys in KiCad are all based on OpenGL. So let's take a look at some of these and see what's going on over there. So this is a design that uh, I've just finished. Uh, it's a you know a little bit more of an advanced design than I had done in the past. Five five mil space, five mil trace. Uh, you know some some interesting stuff on here, and uh, yeah. So I this is the first one I've done everything in OpenGL. I would switch between you know a legacy, legacy Canvas and OpenGL in the past, but uh, well let's just take a look here and take a look at how you do that. So first things first, here's how you actually switch. So we're, right now we're in Legacy Canvas. And I'm going to switch to OpenGL. I could also use F11. You see, not much changes. It mostly looks like you know some drawing stuff. Some of the color schemes a little bit different here. But the big stuff is let's go in and I'm going to hit Control B, and that'll remove all of the drawing of the planes here. But I'm just going to go and delete one of these traces here, right? So I'm going to select a trace, hit the letter I. Uh, that selects the entire trace, and then delete it, right? And then I'm going to turn off the top side. Let's see, top side silk. Let's turn that off so I get that out of the way. And so now you see the pin seven here needs to be connected, right? It's got a little rat's nest line. It needs to be connected. So what I'm going to do is hit X to start drawing. And you see it's starting to draw a trace here. And what it's going to do, it let, well, let's hit, let's hit the letter E, and that actually pulls up the options here, right? So now, right now, let's, let's start with the, the walk around, right? And so the first things first is basically this is, the math is trying to find a way around here, right? So it's trying to actually figure out how it could possibly get around all of these different vias. Now, th these vias are actually footprints that I put in after the fact because, um, because uh, to tie the, the planes together, that's a via stitching. There's some other videos about that. So this is one thing. Now, if I hit E, it looks like it was doing it anyways, but if you move to the shove, um, if you move to the shove thing here, now what's gonna happen is not only will it, it go around some of the existing features, but it'll also move stuff out of the way. And that is just one of the coolest things. And again, this is for advanced designs, this is when it really starts to come in handy, right? You really start to see this being useful when you have multiple lines going there, right? You see multiple lines being paralleled. Uh, sometimes, if in the old way, I would have had to go and delete these traces, move them out of the way, and then draw the line that needs to get through there. In this case, I just draw it and move some stuff out of the way. And it moves vias too. Now you see it doesn't move the, uh, you see the, the pin one ground. Those are actually, like I said, those are footprints. So it's not moving those, but it is moving vias here uh, from anything that I had drawn in the past year. And that's possible because of just the, 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 the drawing engine that's in here and the math behind it. I don't know, I don't understand any of that stuff. So just so we're clear about that. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing that I love. Another thing, this is something that I switched to uh, before. I was switching to OpenGL mode to do this before as well. So if I hit the letter B, it's gonna redraw all the planes that I have in here. I have a, a ground plane, I have some, uh, some power planes, stuff like that. I have all that stuff in here, but I have a, a ground plane on the top that I stitched down to the other layers. And the thing that I love about this, so I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna hit escape to, to get out of the, uh, I was still in the trace mode, which is also this one here. And what I'm gonna do is select the, the plane itself and you can see now I can just go and drag stuff around. In the past, you had to actually individually grab each segment and it was just impossible to get square and it was just really, really tough to do. Now I can just go and add another corner. I can, I can create crazy shapes. 
I can do all this stuff. It's just much easier. This is much more like a vector. And as far as I've heard, this is going to get better and better as well, right? So if you need to go and you need to make a, a weird vector shaped, um, you know, uh, power plane here, right? You can do that. You hit B to draw again. And now you can you can start to get some crazy shapes in there. This is just really, really helpful when you're doing this kind of stuff. All right. So now the last thing uh, I'm going to uh, let's see. So I'm going to delete these two. I'm going to hit escape, select this track. That was just one segment. I'm going to hit mouse over, hit I to select the entire track and then delete it. Same thing here. Uh, oops, oops, oops. Uh, I still getting used to some of these shortcuts, to be honest. I just select the whole track. And some of them are different between old and new. So that's something else that I was avoiding it for. Right? So now what I'm going to do is go into uh, design rules. Oops, sorry, dimensions rather. Dif uh, differential pair setup. I'm going to set this, this for some reason, this set to what I don't have. I have 5 mil space and trace. So I'm going to do trace uh, width and gap here. Okay, and now I'm going to hit uh, place. Yep, route, sorry. I'm going to route a differential pair. Now what you see here is that I have underscore P and underscore N with the same, uh, with the same stuff attached to it there. So I'm going to hit, so basically I start drawing there, and now I'm going to hit, I hit uh, via, right? I can draw via. Uh, nope, no, no. no. <laughs> Got to start again here. Via, there we go. Now I hit layer four. And then I can just keep drawing, right? And this is what you saw before. And what it's doing is it's keeping everything in line here, right? So I think I came out like this. And it's just following my mouse. I'm not, I'm not clicking anything. I'm not doing anything weird. It's just trying to figure out the best way to try and get a, uh, a, you know, a, a matched impedance uh, a differential pairs, meaning that you have the same impedance for one versus the other, right? And so I came over to here, and I'll just stop it there. Uh, but basically, the idea is it's, it's trying to match the amount of distance for each trace so that it can uh, it can have a well-matched line there. And so this is something that was just not, you basically had to do this manually in the old uh, in the old version of KiCad, the old uh, legacy canvas. So there's still some stuff, you know, like I said, so I'm still learning some of the, uh, some of the, the hotkeys here, right? You can always go in and you can, uh, you can go and change your hotkeys. Oh, where is this? It's here. Hotkeys. You can edit some of the hotkeys here, and you can always learn your hotkeys, right, by hitting question question mark, right? So you can show all your hotkeys here. And this really helps to learn this kind of stuff. Um, you know, like one of the things that was different for me is that to actually move a trace in the in the legacy canvas, you mouse over and you hit D, right? In this case, you actually have to hit X to enter the drawing first, right? So now you see I'm in the trace drawing mode, and now I can hit D and move it. But when I do, you see now it's already doing that push and shove thing for that trace, which is super useful, right? So, so that's just a really nice feature, and I really, uh, I, I doubt I'm going back. So, um, yes. So, uh, OpenGL is uh, exciting. You know, it's not a new. It's a, this is not a, a new thing by by a far cry. This has been in at least since uh, version 4.0. It was a little buggy at first, but it's it keeps getting better and better and better. And a lot of the new features are based on on this. Uh, and there's some some YouTube accounts you can follow for that kind of thing. Uh, you can always go over onto the uh, forum, the KiCad forum.kiCad.info, which is a forum that we help run. Uh, that's a great place to ask questions and you know find out what other people are working on and, and having troubles with. And um, and yeah, you'll see more, more and more stuff coming out about OpenGL. I believe in 5.0, I'd have to watch, there's stuff about the, um, the roadmap, but I believe in 5.0, the schematic will also be moving to OpenGL, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but basically, I think everything's moving in this direction. So uh, OpenGL, good. Uh, highly recommend trying it out. We're going to be making more videos here at Contextual Electronics showing off more of this stuff. Hopefully, just the, sub, the, the subset of things you need to know keeps going down and down and down. Uh, but we will try and show each time uh, you know, what you need to do to get, uh, get a board made. Uh, don't forget, you can sign up for, there's a Contextual Electronics newsletter on contextualelectronics.com. There's a little modal box at the bottom. You can sign up there. If you are interested, we use KiCad in everything we design at, at Contextual Electronics. It is a, this is a course where we teach you how to build electronics, right? So it's not just about KiCad. It's also about how to source parts and design circuits and you know the basis, basics of electronics and getting that to actually building a thing. That's really uh, what, we, what we focus on and what we're excited about. So if you're interested, go check out contextualelectronics.com, or we also have a forum that's free and open to the public. You can uh, post some stuff over there and read what others are working on. That's all for now.
Keep it up, KiCad uh, developers. Good job in the OpenGL, and thanks for watching.